Hey everyone, it's Vita back with a second reading for today, August 1st, Thursday. It's a little bit afternoon in Chicago, still very hot and muggy since my last reading. I did do a pre-shuffle and the Galactic Federation card came out into number 22, followed by uh, the Divine Feminine Energy. So I wanted to read directly from the book because I just don't do these cards much justice when I'm just reading them intuitively. So the Galactic Federation of Light was founded over 4.5 million years ago to prevent interdimensional dark forces totally dominating our Milky Way galaxy. They are benevolent beings of many star systems that travel to many galaxies and in some cases multiverses. Their mission involves peacefully carrying out cosmic assistance to all willing beings facing faded and unfaded cosmic phenomena. The Galactic Federation intercede with Earth Councils, Solar Councils, I think the Solar Councils could also be the Solar Angels, and with the Great White Brotherhood of Ascended Masters. They are generally based in the Cirrus star system and travel throughout the galaxy universe and occasionally beyond. They have over 200,000 confederation members from countless planets. They have enormous fleets of starships at their disposal with highly sophisticated, sentient, interdimensional technology. I feel like we're seeing a lot of that technology now with AI. The motherships are self-contained worlds. Some of you could have, in fact, had dreams of arriving on some of these ships. They are <clears throat> literal separate worlds. Their ships can de dematerialize or cloak if need be. And, <clears throat> excuse me, for some reason my throat is clogging up. In the last reading, there was a card that came at the end. I forget which one it was, but it was about someone not being able to find you anymore. And I feel like that's this energy here. You're being cloaked when needed, so certain energies can't tap into you, tap into your energy. The Galactic Federation are participating with the ongoing consciousness parad paradigm shift of cosmos that affects all galaxies of the universe. For coherent developmental reasons, they follow the non-interference law by distant or cloaked monitoring only when threatened with potential threats or dangers will that will destroy the entire planet can they interject. I feel like there's a lot of interjection that is happening right now from these space energies, these councils that are kind of overseeing this uh, consciousness paradigm shift that we're all feeling daily on different levels. So I just wanted to kind of read that and we'll go ahead and get a couple of more cards and see what else comes out. So again, you could be seeing the number 22. Here we have the Nagas, number 14, lovers, erotica, sensuality. So, and then we have the Merkaba. This is a master number 33. So we have that ascending masters energy coming through. Long distance, travel, excitement, movement. I'm going to get a couple of these cards just to see what's going on with this Nagas. I don't want to read from the book for this card. Not sure why, but let's just keep going. Galactic Federation. This is also my Python Spirit card energy. So let's see. Galactic Federation, number 22. These cards are in the reverse. I'm going to turn them into the upright, but we've got consciousness, number 17. The frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all the multidimensional aspects that show up so that we can include them in our reality. So this is what I'm saying. This does kind of feel like while the Galactic Federation recognizes free will, there's something that's going on. Your energy could be, <clears throat> indeed, um, there's some cloaking effect, but there's more intervention than usual. And I'm not quite sure why this is. It could very well have to do with AI technology. 
Yeah, I think so. And this is something that I guess needs, requires fur further thought. But yeah, this consciousness, being conscious of what is happening above us, below us, all around us. It's not just about the human experience. There's a shared galactic experience that's happening when it comes to these consciousness shifts, paradigm shifts, to be more precise. And it could be centered right now around the heart chakra, Nagas, 14. And I have been letting my cat Zori in the house, but I am allergic, so that could also be why my throat is doing some weird stuff. I do take allergy medicine, but whew, remembrance is clarifying Naga. As the frequency of remembrance supports our memory of everything that we have gone through as a soul and a body, providing us with valuable information and tools to flow gracefully with and in this life. This card is an uh, entanglement here. So there's something about previous entanglements that you've had with perhaps past persons, past life energies that you are remembering. And you could be remembering them differently. So let's just say, for example, you have some friends from your past that you're no longer in contact with. And perhaps you... Uh, at one point felt sentimental sentimental about maybe reigniting a relationship. And then you have these memories of being with this person and these experiences and they have not been what you thought they were or you're interpreting those experiences very differently based on the knowledge that you've attained since separating from this. So I do feel like this is about remembering these past entanglements that weren't necessarily in your your highest good, your highest interest. And there's uh, memories that you weren't aware of. So this could even be like past life regression, hypnotic type of uh, remembrance happening. Yeah, Divine Feminine. We already saw Divine Feminine showing up in this deck. So this is about the Divine Feminine energy and re-emergence re of the divine feminine energy tapping into that past goddess spirit strength intelligence something like that this is the number 21 that's also the world card in the tarot so something that was an entanglement that is is now being separated it's got to do with the galactic federation and this consciousness card. So we've got 17, 38 is an 11. The divine feminine, the frequency of divine feminine supports our receptive, nurturing, and soft side, allowing it to express. I almost said suppress. So some of you could have been in the energy where you felt like your divine feminine was being suppressed because of entanglements with, again, perhaps past lovers or friends. And now you've relinquished that or you are relinquishing that, becoming untangled. It's got to do with these memories, this remembrance, this consciousness. You're at another level, so you're just not seeing things as you once did. Express itself openly in helping us to connect with our intrinsic understanding of our connection to all of creation. Our connection to the earth and why we're here has to do with this Merkaba here. And then we've got the tree of life, the Kabbalah tree of life. 32 is a 5, 33. So there is a lot going on when it comes to opposing forces yet again. You could say 33 is the number for Freemasons. And then we've got the Kabbalah, the tree of life. We could actually look at this as just a religion. There's uh, been a lot of tampering that's gone on with uh, different sort of doctrines, if you will. And uh, it's, it's created shifts, massive shifts in the collective consciousness that have restricted the divine feminine energy. Oh my God. Followed by the divine masculine energy. So there's this. I don't 
do not look at this Nagas typically as divine feminine and divine masculine energy, but this could be what this is, or I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Divine masculine is 22. The Galactic Federation is 22. So perhaps this this collaboration, this meeting, these meetings have to do with this divine masculine energy is followed by, or both, it's followed by the cosmic flower, which is 18, activates our remembrance of the place we call home. We've got remembrance already out. So this is going back to the divine feminine and the divine masculine, remembering remembering the connection elsewhere, bringing it in here. That there's no separation between the divine feminine and the divine masculine energy, perhaps. 22, 21. Hmm. Express ourself openly and helping us to connect to our intrinsic understanding. So there's something... Perhaps the collective has not understood fully when it comes to the divine masculine and the divine feminine energy and how they work together. Something between the DF and the DM is being overseen by the Galactic Federation. It's got to do with consciousness and past life. I keep wanting to say regression and I don't know why, but again, this Merkaba, this is long distance travel, movement, excitement, Followed by the shadow, so perhaps this is, uh, and then the M, the M, I, B, and the reptilians. So on a lot of levels, the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies have been very much repressed because of because of memory. Very deliberate. It's got to do with the food, the air, interdimensional travel of shadow beings. Okay, well, this reading's going a little bit above my uh, understanding, so I'm just going to have to kind of keep swinging with it. Magnificence, the core from which we pour our magnificence out into the world. So this is about accessing the core of both the divine feminine and divine mas masculine energies, bringing it into the earth through memory memory, conscious memories that have been suppressed. Now I do have to go back to Nagas because I don't know why this card is here. It's not really matching with these, I don't feel like. But let's, um, Nagas 14. Huh, very interesting. Okay, ancient Hindu and Buddhist texts speak of the semi-divine serpent beings called Nagas, which is Sanskrit, Sanskrit for serpent. Powerful, very beautiful, highly advanced snake reptoid beings that are advantageous to humans while also dangerously fearsome, fearsome and temperamental if provoked. Hmm. So I feel like too what could be happening here is that this divine masculine energy is uh, coming into some sort of alignment with the divine feminine energy. And I almost said lions, which is like Lyran energy. So, okay, here we go. Some suggest the Nagas could be a human hybridized genotype from the Alpha Draconian race. Like the Alpha Draconians, Nagas have the capacity to shapeshift into human form, total human form. Right, so there's been a lot of shapeshifting energy. We, we saw shapeshifter in this deck in the last reading. So I'm going to have to use this one as well because this card always confuses me. It just never feels like it's all that divine. So for these two to show up with this, I'm kind of like my radar is up. So 
The Naga's full form is, is fourth dimensional. Okay, fourth dimensional and not visible to the average low third vibrational human sensory perception. Being subterranean. So we're talking about below subterranean, deep, dense ocean waters, citadels away from human populations highly protective of their private environment. So you could also be very protective right now of your thoughts. You understand that you're receiving a new sort of information that you've become unplugged to a certain dimension or you're becoming unplugged from the third dimension, something like that. Huh. Unlike the terra firma, walking, talking humanoids, Nagas are more comfortable inhabiting the subtle, sensual energy fields where they fluidly regenerate their inbuilt elixir of immortality from the depths of the ocean. So there is something going on with the waters, the deep, dark waters. There's an emergence of something. The divine masculine, the true divine masculine, the true divine feminine energy there's some sort of new spark that's happening. It's very protective in nature. There's a lot of suppression. Oh, yeah, this is distorted energy. So, and we can kind of see this playing out in the uh, different spectrums. Like, I'll just say the Olympics for right now, where you've got the sports and you've got fighters that are fighting and you've got women fighting women that are not women, okay? I'll just leave it at that. And so the, this distortion has distorch, distortion has to be corrected. This is requiring some intervention because this can't, these two energies ha can't be suppressed any longer because it is affecting like the whole grid or something like that. Something like that. It's got to do with consciousness, the Macarba, which is 33. I had no idea I was going to do this kind of reading. I don't, I don't, obviously you should be able to notice that I don't do any scripted sort of uh, messages. I just kind of hop on. <laughs> and so things can come out a little weird. Macarba means to ride to ride, an ancient Jewish mystic practice that explains the geometric mechanics of interdimensional travel. And we did see this Kabbalah, the tree of life that's at the bottom of the deck. So yeah, the Makarba and the Kabbalah, these two energies are going together. 32, it's got to do, 32 is five, Nagas, 14 is a five. So these two, have something to do with each other, interlocking 3D tetrahedron grid energy forces. I said something about the grid. So this has to do with correcting the energetic grid forces. There's a correction that has to be made, hence the Galactic Federation. Okay, well, I'm completely exhausting myself. <laughs> I'm out of my depth, for sure, for sure. So let's just close this out with... Uh, these cards and if you guys have anything to uh, add please don't hesitate in the comment section I, I always love your comments so much they're quite helpful the Galactic Federation yeah I'm just gonna see what else we get oh goodness we got the Hermit the Samaritan and Liberator solitude focus intently on inner life serves personal creativity Samaritan refines your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. So there is galactic intervention. There has to be. There has to be. This isn't something that the Galactic Federation normally does. They allow us to have our free will, but something has crisscrossed with this Nagas here. And so there's an intervention that has to occur. The liberator, freeing yourself and others, freeing yourself and others, from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns, okay? Yeah, so this has to do, again, with the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies, what's happening 
um, across the globe is that evil is being seen as good and good is being seen as evil. And this, this line of consciousness cannot continue to occur because something has been happening rapidly. It's been outpacing the levels of ascension that are occurring. And if it doesn't, if whatever this, this good that is actually evil doesn't get suppressed, then yeah, things will bloom completely out of control. And yeah, okay, well, we got Martyr here at the bottom. Let's keep going. Nagas, 14. So yeah, we saw pilot school in the last uh, reading too. So this is certainly about interdimensional travel. This Macarba here, the chariot energy, tree of life, shape-shifting through different dimensions. Mystic here. Clarifying Nagas, revels in intimate union with the divine. Union with the divine, divine union, divine masculine, divine feminine. So this could be about, for sure, reunion, union, not reunion, actual union with the divine masculine and divine feminine. Hence this remembrance card, for sure. And see, we got this purple here, and all of this is purple here. And this is after coming out of this delusional rapport with the divine. So there's distortion that has to be corrected, and there's intervention that's occurring. Definitely. All right, let's get one more. Divine, masculine. We've got judge and banker. I'm going to go with the light attributes. Balancing justice and compassion, managing the fair distribution of power, managing the uh, equal, um, how do you say, not benefits, but the mechanisms for both the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies, how they work succinctly together to uh, do magic, for sure. Beggar confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. So this is something that's happening with the divine masculine energy. There's some sort of equilibrium balance that is taking place. Martyr again. Let's get a card for consciousness. Okay, we've got gossip here and servant. The uh, light attribute awakens consideration for the feelings of others. Honoring trust is clarifying consciousness, multidimensional aspects that show up. So this is about showing up fully in your reality in both your masculine and feminine divine energies. And this is about delighting in serving others with a free and loving heart opening up your heart. So there's a lot of talk going on about you, about where you are currently in your life, where you continue to, to go. It's no longer about just striving either. You're, you're going to be thriving differently in this newly released energy that's happening through some sort of, uh, I wanted to say stigma, something about stigma, but something that was stigmatized is being un looked at differently. I'm not sure. Remembrance is 38. That's an 11. So there's a lot of there's a lot of distortion still. I mean, like a whole lot. Samaritan liberator hermit. These are all going within type of energies here, doing things that you don't even want to do, helping people that you might rather not help, but maybe you were looking at something differently. Maybe this has to do also with uh, not being selfish when it comes to sharing some of your thoughts because of... Uh, no, that's not right. Selfish isn't the right word. Something about your learning, what you're learning, 
sharing it with this gossip card awakens consideration, awakening your consideration for others that might not be at your same level of consciousness, but they're close. They're closer than you think. Yeah, whether you're divine masculine or divine feminine, your other half is closer than you think. The union, this union is closer than you think. Okay, remembrance. Dilettante landing on mystic delights in the arts without having to be a professional alerts you to the danger of becoming superficial in your pursuits. So this is, I feel like, remembering your true mission and what your pursuits are really about when it has to do with this line of thinking, the planet, planetary, multidimensional thinking versus me, me individual materialistic thoughts let's get one card for divine feminine two are falling face down advocate and visionary inspires you to put compassion into action and visionary capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others that's kind of what i said here with this gossip and consciousness, understanding that what you see, where you're, the level you're at now in your consciousness, way of thinking, of living, <clears throat> others may not be where you are just yet. That doesn't mean you dismiss them. And that could be for either divine masculine or divine feminine energy. Just because someone isn't where you are now currently doesn't mean they won't arrive. Okay. Willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain. So this is about advocacy for the planet as well. Hence the Galactic Federation. Teacher, because you're here to be a teacher. Ability to communicate knowledge, experience, skill, or wisdom. So you're highly skilled at whatever it is that you do. How you speak. How you're seeing the world. There's a clarity that you possess that you've been manifesting through this hermit energy here. And so now at one point you might not have been willing to speak up for whatever reason, and now you are, and it will help liberate you and the collective consciousness to this next level. So let's see what else. The janky deck. Let's just... Uh, Clarify Mystic, Naga, Dilettante, Red Rum. Red Rum. That's an interesting. So there's something from the past that's ending for good. Not being not being entangled with these uh, subter subter. I can't say the word. The darker energies that aren't visible to the eye. Red Rum. It's, it's backwards. So red, something about the color red, the red planet, Mars. Okay. He who is pregnant with evil and conceives trouble gives birth to disillusionment. Landed here with dilettante and divine feminine. Pretension to much deeper knowledge than you actually possess. So... Hmm. Ooh. Okay, well, this has got to do somewhat with, I feel like, spiritual uh, arrogance, thinking that you've arrived at this, the highest frequency possible, somebody anyway, doesn't have to be you, and making the corrections, knowing that that's not really the case, things are constantly changing. Uh, there is an evil that we're dealing with that is being masqueraded as good, and is conceiving trouble and giving birth to disillusionment. And that's why the collective is becoming stronger to dismantle these forces, these dark forces, hence the Galactic Federation. So that's brilliant for sure. Let's get one more, even though I probably should not. Nanotechnology. It's landing here on consciousness. 
So that's interesting. I feel like this nanotechnology is, a, is this multidimensional technology that is talked about with this Galactic Federation. So it, the Galactic Federation is here because our technology has reached a, uh, has gone beyond the limit that it should for this planet in the hands that of those that are in charge, if you will. So something has to be adjusted Adjusted adjustments are being made throughout these different aspects in all of our realities, for sure. So I'm just going to close this out with some final angel messages. Whoa, whoa, Archangel Michael, crystal clear intentions. Be clear about what you desire and focus upon it with unwavering faith. So be, be uh, diligent, continue to be diligent, flexible in your thinking understanding that these energies are changing very quickly what we're seeing on the macro level is different on the micro level you do have choices you uh, continue to move ahead and perhaps you are coming out of that belief that you have to leave everyone behind maybe that's not the case maybe that's uh, something that we're all learning I'm not quite sure but this is also about opening up to new ideas, new ways of living life, looking at things and that, that minute, something about minute detail. And here we've got remember who you are. We've already got remembrance out here. So Archangel Michael again, that's Archangel Michael two times. You are a powerful, loving and creative child of God. You are very loved. You're very loved, you're protected, your energy is being cloaked at this time as uh, certain um, delusions become unraveled from the collective consciousness so that we can all steer, steer our ships in that direction that we're meant to go. Ooh, bear with me if you guys have made it this far in the video. Thank you so very much and I'll see you soon in another one.